Hi, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to take a regular paperback book and make it into an ebook quickly and easily. Something that you can put on a Kindle, any old tablet, a phone, and read anytime you want. Well, as you know, a lot of us collect a lot of books. I myself, if you're like me, am the type of person who will browse a bookstore and for years have picked up these guys, maybe they're on sale and I couldn't resist, I had a huge bookshelf collected over the years, over like 20 years, what would you say, 20 years? Sure. And, and, and more, books from college, all this stuff built up and I thought, well, more bookshelves the better. I had a lot of bookshelves, uh, I got them from Ikea, they were 20 bucks a pop and I just kept loading them with books. But then I started moving and moving a lot and I would, my wife and I would put all these books into boxes and we were loading them into the car, into the moving truck, going from one place to the next. It became really overly burdensome. So what I started to think was uh, when the tablet market ex began to explode. I really wanted to get all my books onto my tablet. The problem was I could repurchase all those books that I really wanted to read, but I then I started getting upset with myself because I started thinking, well, why repurchase them? I haven't even read the ones I've bought yet. I'm a slow reader. I like to purchase the book and think, I'm going to read this someday. And then I, I would read it sometimes, and there's a lot that I have not read and I would try to get rid of them, and I wouldn't even enjoy the book because, guess what? Um, I'm just trying to read it to get rid of it to reduce my things, because I think the popular thing to do now is, is reduce your items and your, your living footprint. And you still are gonna want some books to be around. It's not like I wanna get rid of all my books, but these little books, how many times am I gonna read it? Actually, I'm a big fan of William Gibson, and I might read this more than once, but I just am sick and tired of moving with it. Uh, I, I don't need a shelf full of paperbacks. Eh, it seems really cluttery. And my wife hates them. Anyway, so I do have some good-looking books that I'll show you that look good on a coffee table, that look good on the shelf, and or maybe some books that make me look a little smart. Whether I've read them or not, at least a visitor coming over to my place would say, oh, well, you look at the book you picked out. It looks really smart. Now, I don't know if they'd ever think that because if they knew me, they'd know I was pretty silly anyway. In any case, um, I wanted to reduce this. Now, you might be saying, well, once you turn this into an ebook, you have to get rid of it, right? Because you have to kind of cut it up. Yes. So later, I'm going to take, uh, we're going to show you how to take this really cheap cutter, and this book will go through this cutter. But that's okay. I'm going to give you the advantages of why I'm doing this. I'd like to introduce to you an amazing product called ScanSnap. It's by Fujitsu. This is not a commercial for ScanSnap. I always want to say SnapScan for some reason. Uh, but this I found out to be the best one of its kind that I could find at the time I purchased it. Yes, it is a few hundred dollars, but hold on a second. I want to tell you, and I don't work for the company, I don't own stock in them, nothing. But this device have, has revolutionized my life. There's three products that have revolutionized, three electronic products that have revolutionized my life. First was the iPod. Yes, you know it to be true. You put all your music and CD collections onto it, and you could carry it all in one little device. It was amazing. Yes, the second device that kind of blew my mind and revolutionized the way I've thought of electronics was the iPhone. And, and you know why. And now it's the smartphone. Uh, Android is the same way now. Uh, they're amazing devices that you can do just about anything on these phones. There's a third thing that is not a revolution, uh, in people's minds, but it will revolution if for the people who have it, it will revolutionize the way you work or even live in the in terms of paper, getting paper, anything on paper, photos onto something digital. 
and that is the the one I have is the Snapscan IX500. Um, it's an extremely fast document scanner. It's probably the not the best photo scanner for doing fine detailed work on photos, but it is an amazing document scanner. So fast. It'll tear through this book in no time. Now you might be thinking, why would I spend a few hundred dollars on a scanner just to scan in a few paperback books? You probably wouldn't. I mean, you could take that money and then repurchase those books elsewhere or whatever. But this has come in handy for anything. I had mountains of photographs. I actually very quickly scanned in. I had mountains of paperwork from years of, you know, tax taxes where I felt I had to save every single thing that I ever did every year I did taxes. So I had these boxes just piling up in every year and I wondered, do I have to take this with, with me everywhere I go? I found it in my tax situation. I actually did not have to keep all this and I could actually have a electronic representation. Um, I don't know if that's the true with everybody in every state. I'm not sure. I'm not a financial guy. But for me, this made sense. I eliminated every single tax document. Now, you might be asking, what did you do with all the paperwork afterwards? I got rid of it. I took it to one of those bank shredding days where you go to the bank and you give, they have these shredding trucks out back and you hand it over and you watch them drop all your paperwork into a gigantic shredder and it makes a loud noise, but it was all gone. I no longer have to take it with me everywhere I go. I don't have to have giant closets hold up with tax documents and papers and receipts. It's gone. And this guy, with its built-in software, which is really good for Windows or Mac, um, can actually organize that with ease. And I found that to be very, very beneficial. But not only did it do all this documentation and photographs of my life, it also did my books. All I have to do is get the book in a format that this can actually scan into. Comes right out here. It'll shoot through there, as you'll see, and then it'll change your life. You might not think so now, but it will. This is the most inexpensive paper cutter that I could find on Amazon. It was like $15, I want to say. Okay, so you take the safety off. You've all used these, I'm sure, if you went to elementary school. Okay, and it's like this. Be careful. Caution, sharp blades. You don't want to cut anything off. You want to observe the actual guard. Now, if you remember from elementary school and your teacher's telling you this, you'll, you'll know that that's important. Uh, now, cutting here, cutting a book isn't any worse than cutting anything else, uh, but it's just good to talk about safety. I'm an old Boy Scout, what can I say? Okay, so here's our book, and... Of course, you can't put the whole thing in there. It's not going to cut. But So this takes a little bit of work. And you might be thinking, I don't have time to cut all these books. I've got tons of these paperbacks. I don't know what to do with them. I don't want to cut them. Well, the solution I found was we all binge watch TV shows on Amazon. Do we not? Uh, there was a show I was watching on Amazon Prime Instant Video and I just let the episodes roll and it was a good show I could have it in the background while I just did these I did a few every week and maybe I do now one once a month uh, but I got through a truckload of books this way and and I had something running in the background it was very enjoyable I made it into a hobby and I reduced my load of stuff down to next to nothing the next house I buy I could buy a smaller house pay less money and then suddenly I'm living good without all my stuff, but yet I have all my stuff. Okay, so here's the book that we're going to do today. I've done this with small books. I've done this with very large books that were like five, 600 pages thick that were pulpy, kind of those thick pages. I went through them. They tore, everything tears apart quite nicely. So what I'm going to do first is, as you can see, this one actually has a silky page as the second page, so it might be a little more difficult, but I would take that and just rip it, and if you can see this, okay, rip the backing so the backing uh, is a little weaker, and 
rip it down like that. So you get the front and the side together. And we can scan this and make it the cover of our book. So I'm actually going to put this face down because that's how we're going to build our pile. I'm also now going to rip off the backing. Taking off with it any of this backing here with it. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit because it doesn't go nicely through the scanner. There's nothing on the back I need. Clean that up just a little bit. Okay, and now we have a back of our book. But I'm going to put that aside for later because that goes on the back of the pile. Okay, so here's our book. Um, you don't have to have a cover. It's up to you. You can make this thing anything you want or look any way that you want. So I'm going to take about this many pages because it says on here you know, 10 to 15 page minimum. You'll feel it as you go. You'll feel how hard it is to cut and how much your cutter can take and all that. And it just pops apart like that. Keep the book here upright. This is the beginning. And I'm going to put, put it right here. If it fits under the bar, you know it's going to cut. Boom. Okay, I'm going to put this face down. Okay, this is our book. I have finished cutting it, and that took less than five minutes to do. So there is our pile, and we are going to scan this. On picking the settings, use the grayscale instead of the color options for the text. Then you can go back and use color if you want to scan in the cover of the book. That would be fine. Also make sure it's on duplex scanning with PDF for the file. Duplex scanning makes sure to scan both sides of each page. Notice that I'm putting in the group of pages upside down, just like that. Make sure that they're snug in there with their guides and just keep hitting the button. Notice that the whole text of the book can be scanned in one file, in one take. The software can handle the whole book at once. Okay, so when the book is done, here's all the pages. I just kind of piled them up as I went. It's still in read readable form somewhat, but you know what? I'm just going to donate it to the paper recycler, which is, in this case, my trash, but then that goes into the paper recycler. Done. If you made two files, one for the cover and one for the body, you need to put them together. And a color cover is nice. The best way to do it is to drag and drop from one file to the next. Show the thumbnails and then drag and drop the cover in. The reason I use PDFs instead of using the OCR software to create an EPUB or something else besides a PDF is the book looks identical to the book I had in physical form. All the graphics are there, etc. And there aren't the mistakes in the text that OCR software tends to create. The drawback is the text isn't searchable, but that doesn't bother me with these books. And the file size is a bit bigger, but if you stick to the grayscale format, you can keep the file size down nicely. And I have found that they do not really take up that much space on a modern computer or tablet. Today's tablets can handle a lot of data, and these PDFs added up don't make a huge amount of difference. After syncing that book onto the device of your choice, you can see its cover and here are the pages you get once you open it. They look like paper even on this older iPad. The page is slightly larger and the book you once had is now lit up. I also don't have the stinkiness of the old pages that used to irritate my eyes and nose and made the reading experience worse. That was the biggest drawback for me with reading old books. We are giving the old books a new life. It might be harder to see in this other example here, but uh, if you want to get the PDF file size down even further, you can change the scanner settings to black and white instead of grayscale. This does reduce the file size, but doesn't look quite as rich in eye to page value. Some of the characters are a little more faded, but in this case, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and you can choose whatever you like. Happy scanning! Ta-da!